Well, hello everyone, I'm Yanni from bu for You Gaming and today we are gonna jump into Whispers of a Machine. So this is a fairly new sci-fi point and click game from 2019 and in this one you play as Vera, a cybernetically augmented special agent who is tasked with investigating a string of murders. Oh yes, so that sounds exciting. And look at this, there's some kind of, I don't know, is that a city or something? It looks like a city who's kind of floating in the sky, or I don't know if it's attached uh, to something down here, but it looks really, really interesting. Uh, and apparently there are multiple endings in this one, depending on the choices you make uh, throughout the game. Uh, so it might have some degree of replayability, which is of course always a good thing for any game. Uh, the developers behind the game are Clifftop Games, who also made Kathy Rain, and Feral Wit Interactive, who made The Samaritan Paradox. I did play through Kathy Rain uh, a couple of years ago on the channel. It's a really good detective story too. Uh, I haven't played The Samaritan Paradox, but I guess I'm gonna have to put that on my two playlists, uh, especially if this one turns out to be a, as good as it sounds. So anyway, let's just try and jump into this. Of course, there's a little options menu. You can play it in four different languages. We have some general uh, graphics and volume settings. And uh, we're going to leave the tutorials on because I have a feeling we're going to need it for this one. There's some special features in this game that we're probably going to have to learn before we kind of get probably into it. There is also a nudity setting and uh, I've decided to try and leave this on. I don't... My impression is it's not going to be a game that is like flooded with nude pictures but in case you want to avoid that for whatever reason you don't want to have nudity in your games you do have an option to turn it off uh, which is always good um, so anyway let's leave it like that and get into this this game uses automatic saves decisions are permanent so make your choices carefully Okay, this game also contains occasional fast flashing images which may cause discomfort and trigger seizures if you have photosensitive epilepsy. That is something to take into account too. Viewer discretion advised. Okay, well, we're gonna give this a go. So, what's with the gloomy look? Left someone dear behind? Ah, uh, yeah, you could say that. Been there. So, Nord Sunday, eh? better buckle up. We've got some nasty weather coming in. I heard. Sadly, caring about storms is a luxury people in my line of work are rarely afforded. Oh, and what kind of work is that? Special agent, violent crimes, Central Bureau. Well, shit. <laughs> yeah, what else is there to say to that response? <laughs> oh, look at this. I love the look at the little train there, and yeah, it was kind of a city or something up there, but it does look like it's actually attached to the ground, but that looks really cool. Nordson Workshop Hall, 10, 12 a.m. Oh, wow. Okay, so we definitely have a murder that's been going on here. You there. This is a restricted crime scene. Ooh, it is Constable, Special Agent England here. Hi there, I'm Vera. Your superior briefed you about me, right? Vera England, Central Bureau. Hmm. I think this sounds At ease, Constable. Right. Special Agent Anglin here. Oh, my apologies, Agent. I was expecting someone older. I'll take that as a compliment. Now, brief me, please. Certainly, ma'am. The victim is Carl Oscarson, age 33. Stabbed to death by an unknown assailant. He worked here as a carpenter and was found early this morning by a co-worker who's sitting over there by the window. Got it. Okay. Ooh, tutorial. Vera's personality. Vera can advance three distinct personality traits. Empathetic, assertive, and analytical. Ooh, okay. So... I guess this will move around, you know, depending on which choices you make, then this little plus sign will move. Your choices will influence all three, affecting the course of the story and the tools at your disposal. 
Advancing one personality trait always weakens the other two, so make your choices carefully. Ew. Hmm. I think I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm just going to kind of pick whatever I feel is right for the situation. But you could technically, you know, I guess that adds is part of the, you know, um, replayability. You could also choose to, like, really emphasize one of these, for instance. Uh, just to see where, how that in, uh, impacts everything, or you can try and do a more balanced approach or something. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes. Sorry about the state of the crime scene. We're not used to this sort of thing. Okay, I get it, but I gotta tell you that this isn't up to par. Follow my lead, alright? Evidently, this entire room should have been evacuated. Staying clear of the body would have decreased the risk of contaminating evidence. Oh, don't worry about it, Constable. This looks, um, quite typical. Not really. <laughs> it would probably have kind of, um, hit the space a little bit more. Um, hmm, okay. So, this one is probably the assertive one. This is like the analytical one, and this is the empathetic one. Um... I think we're gonna try this one this time. Evidently, this entire room should have been evacuated. Staying clear of the body would have decreased the risk of contaminating evidence. Yeah, maybe we should have established a wider perimeter. Yes, I would highly advise that for next time. Got it. I'll strive to do better in the future. Good to hear. Now, give me a second while I examine the body. Sure, I'll be here. LT actually wasn't too hard on him, and it is important, you know, because it's it's a big part of solving crimes like this, so he needs to know how to do his, his job well. This choice has amplified Vera's analytical side. There will be many instances like this, strengthening one personality trait at the expense of the other two. Okay, got it. So, is this where you use your x-ray vision? My what? Come on, you have to be aware of the rumors. How agents like you are supposed to be equipped with some kind of advanced cybernetics? Hmm. Let's just say I'm good at what I do, we'll leave it at that. The Central Bureau has a strict no common policy on those types of inquiries. I'd love to talk about that, but I'd be breaking the rules. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this is like the empathetic one, this is like the analytical one, and this is like the assertive one. Yes, so I think we got that now. Um, what would we say in a situation? Well, let's try and do the empathetic one. Then we have I'd kind of done all three of them. That, but <laughs> I'd be breaking the rules. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Use the left mouse button to walk and interact with objects. Spacebar or tab hold display interactables in the room. Oh, okay. Or we can use tab. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's actually a lot of uh, stuff here to check out. Okay, cool. Click once on an inventory item to examine it or drag and drop it to combine it with other things. Okay, so we have a handgun. My pistol. It fires conventional projectiles using magnetic propulsion. It's loaded with 600 rounds of compressed alloy ammunition. The battery is the limiting factor, lasting for about 80 shots in quick succession. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely an advanced um, handgun. Your notebook contains two sections, notes and people. You can click the arrow in the corner to toggle between them. You can show inventory items during dialogue by simply clicking on them. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so notes, Carl's the murder. I'm here. I need to gather as much evidence as possible and try to get some kind of lead on the killer. Mm hmm. Carl Oscarson, murdered at age 33. He had a job as a carpenter in the Nordson workshop hall. Well, that's kind of nice, and it kind of keeps track on, of the story and all the details. At least I know for me it can be hard to, you know, remember everything from time to time when you play something like this. Uh, even if you, I played in one sitting, then it's kind of nice that you can go back and kind of, you know, catch up on stuff. Uh, very neat. Okay, so what are these things? Forensic scanner, biometric analyzer, and muscle boost. 
Oh, okay. Well, we also have the My photo. Picture of Alex. <sighs> I miss him. Oh. So, I guess that's the one she left behind. Interesting. Then I should finish examining the body first. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> All right. We've got multiple knife-sized stab wounds to the chest. I don't see a murder weapon, so I take it none was found at the scene? That's right. All knives and sharp tools in the building have been accounted for, too. It looks like the victim was attacked directly from the front. I don't see any major defense wounds, so this was either a surprise attack, or the victim knew the perpetrator. What about any potential suspects, Constable? Did Carl have enemies? None as far as we know. He seemed to be well-liked among the guys here. But the man who found him might know more. There was a photo in his chest pocket. Ooh, okay, yeah, I figured we would get an explanation for what this was about. Um, augmentation basics. In the lower right corner are your augmentations, toggled with a single mouse click. Experiment with your orcs to learn how they work. Additional tutorials will appear when needed. Later on, you will unlock different orcs depending on how you have shaped various personality. Oh, so it looks like we can have three more. So I guess there's more than three available, but depending on what you do and how you answer questions, you will get different ones. That's kind of really, really cool, actually. Um, well, first of all, let's see what this is it's about. It's a bloody photograph of Carl and a young woman, taken fairly recently by the look of it. He's holding hands with the woman, but I can't discern her face. Too much damage to the photo. She's wearing a brass necklace. Could be relevant. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he gave her the necklace. You never know. Okay, so let's see what this is about. Forensic scanner. Drag and drop the scanner to move it around. Anomalies viewed through the lens will light up in a bright color. The scanner is now in smart scan mode where forensic anomalies are detected from the surrounding environment. Ooh, this sounds so cool. Ooh, okay. So, oh, we can. Well, first of all, let's check out the body here. Oh, look at that. What is that? Can I, how do I? Oh, you just hold it and let go. Deceased male, age 32, plus minus four years. Blood, oh, so much stuff happening. <laughs> Blood type B, estimated time of death, T minus six hours. DNA prints and blade shape added to data vault. Oh, okay, so now we have some data that tells us some of this stuff. Wow, this is an advanced, um, yeah, you can see blade shape, his bio, that must be like the DNA and prints. And this is like the this setting we just used. Collected scanner samples will be added to your data vault and can be attached to the scanner for a targeted search. Unlike the smart scan, samples will allow detection in areas with a lot of contamination, such as picking up specific fingerprints in a room full of prints. Keep in mind that you won't find any new samples this way, so remember to use the smart scan mode too. Hmm. Ah, okay, so the smart scan is more like getting new information, whereas these ones you can use to compare or something if you want to compare a ah so if you find a blade or something i don't really see a blade but what if we click on this yeah analyzing 100 percent and it just says matching data pattern yeah because we are on his body so of course it will save so if there was another blade here somewhere which i don't th think there is then um well we can't see one right now but then we can probably use this to do something so what about carl's bio if we put it over here, and of course we should get 100% because that's the DNA, and there doesn't seem to be anything on him. Uh, we know this guy over here looks like he has blood on his hands or something, so if we do this, ah, and I, analyzing 100%, matching data DNA. Oh. Aha, uh -huh, so... That's the DNA. What if I say I want to do a smart scan on him? Human blood type B. Okay, that was the same as over here. That would suggest that he likely only touched the body after death. Ooh, DNA mismatch from current carrier. Yeah, of course, because his own DNA 
is mixed with the DNA from uh, this guy. Pattern indicates post-mortem smear, two plus hours. Oh, that's really, really handy. <laughs> okay, very cool. I think we got the idea. At least I think I got it. So let's turn this off again and see what this one does. Biometric analyzer. Oh, it's like a um, lie detector thingy. So we can see he is relaxed. We can lock target, unlock. Interesting. Um, your biometric analyzer will automatically lock on to nearby targets. You can also click the lock icon on your target to force the analyzer to stay connected. Lastly, the biometric output may display emotional anomalies during dialogue. Click on them to make them known to Vera before they disappear. Oh, okay. Ah, that's probably only if there's like an anomaly, then you can click on it for her to know that. Interesting. Um, so now it's locked onto him, so if we move away or something, then um, I guess it will stay on him. Yeah. Cool. So what do we Constable. talk to him? Yes, agent. Okay, we already talked about this. And we already talked about this. What if we show him this? Do you know who the woman in this photo is? Too hard to tell. Sorry. Okay. I don't see a reason to show him this. And our oh, handgun nuts. <laughs> no. I don't think he would okay, take that the right way. I need for now. But he stayed well, relaxed, so cool. Nice. Okay, well before we move on, let's see what this is. Muscle boost increases your strength for a limited time. Interact with your target before the timer runs out or it will need time to recharge. Oh, okay. So that's the timer. And then now it has to recharge probably. Yeah, there we go. And Ah, well, I don't think there's anyone we want to do anything with right now. So let's see. The first thing we would do now we have invested or uh, analyzed the corpse or looked at corpse, we should probably go and talk to this guy over here. So let's go and talk to him. And I'm actually thinking it would be a good idea to have this on. Be quick and to the point, he doesn't look happy to be here. Take your time to console the clearly distressed man. Begin by asking about his bloody hands. Looks can deceive. He, if he's guilty, stalling would give him a chance to come up with a lie. Well, we could do this and try and trip him up, but the blood on his hands is from like two hours later. Like it's post-mortem, so let's l assume that he is not guilty. Well, we're not assuming anything, but let's give him the benefit of doubt, right? So, um... I don't think he really wants to be here for very long. We could kind of console him, but I think as long as we're here, it doesn't really work. So, it won't matter much. So Hello, let's do this. I'm Agent England. I have some questions for you. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's turn this on. Okay, see, it did automatically because we're talking to him and he's anxious. So... I guess that's not an anomaly. That's kind of to be expected. I don't know how anomalies will show up. Can you tell me a little bit about Carl? Sure. I've known him since I started working here four years ago. We instantly hit it off. He, he had a great sense of humor. He used to be so cheerful, you know? Always kidding around, always with a smile on his face. But then about a year ago, something happened. He became absent-minded and humorless. I know people can change, but this came seemingly from nowhere. Huh. What do you think caused this shift? No idea. Whatever it was, he wouldn't confide in me about it. Hmm. Why don't you tell me about what happened this morning? Okay. I get up early for my morning smoke. I keep my smokes in my locker, so I came in here. I saw Carl lying in the corner. It was still kind of dark, so I thought he'd fallen and hurt himself. I ran over to him. That's when I noticed the blood, and I guess I was kind of in shock, so... I tried to stop the bleeding, but then I felt how cold he was. I yelled for help. The guys came running, and then Josef, our foreman, sent someone to go get the police. Okay. When was the last time you saw Carl alive? Late last night, around midnight. 
He stayed up with us playing cards, which, which is unusual. Unusual? How so? Well, it was rare for Carl to stick around in the evenings. He usually went out by himself. Oh. Do you know where he used to go? No idea. He didn't talk much about that. Maybe he went to the canteen to meet some friends. Anyway, Carl seemed a bit anxious last night. He seemed distracted. Got it. Thanks for the info. Hmm. Wonder if Carl got himself into some some kind of trouble. That's enough questions for now. Oh no, okay. I actually wanted to ask about this. It's a bloody photograph of Carl and a young woman. Yep. He's holding nope. hands with the woman, but I can't she's wearing a brass. A few okay. more questions, if I may. Hey, okay, we're gonna show him this. It's bloody though, but have a look at this picture. Do you know who the woman is? Uh yeah, that's just some old girlfriend of Carl's from ages ago. Is that so? It doesn't look that old. At least Carl looks about the same. Guess the guy aged well. Any other questions? Hmm. Why did he act like that about it? Huh. Logically explain that he has nothing to gain by being deceptive. He's stern about it. He's clearly being dishonest. Try to appeal to his conscience. Hmm. Well, he seems to actually like Carl, but why is he being all defensive kind of about her? Huh. Look. I got this job because I have great instincts, and I know that you were lying to me. Maybe you're doing it for a good reason, or to protect someone. But all I want is to catch Carl's murderer. If you had nothing to do with what happened, you need to come clean now, for both of your sakes. I'm, I'm sorry. I gave him a promise. Well, the lady in the photo, Carl is still seeing her. Well, was, I suppose. Why wouldn't you tell me that from the beginning? It was a secret. Carl said they would both get in trouble if anybody knew. Why would they get into trouble? An affair? I didn't ask, but yeah, it could be. All right. Tell me everything you know about this woman. Carl said she lived somewhere north of town, but that's all I know. Okay, I believe you. Ooh, okay. That is cool, and of course we have nothing there but a mystery woman. Ooh, well, she might have to do, like, they used to date a long time ago, right? That's what he said. And then they started dating again, which might have been a year ago that somehow that got him into trouble, right? I don't know. But that's cool. So it gives a little audio pop-up and then you just have to click it here, I guess. I don't know what happens if you don't click it in time, if you get a second chance to pick up on it. Uh, but I guess you have to click it to actually get a dialogue option that is um, relevant to that. Uh, okay. That's Ooh. enough questions for now. Okay. Nice. Uh, okay, let's go and see. Well, I don't know why the policeman would know anything about this, but... Constable. Yes, Agent. Let's just ask Do about it. Do you know it. anything about a woman who was seeing Carl? I'm afraid not. I didn't know Carl myself. Okay, we have that established that now that he didn't know him and he's still relaxed, so he's okay, most likely telling now. the truth. Very well, Agent. Cool. So, let's turn this off. I think we are good now. Um, hmm. Let's see. Well, we would probably go and check out Carl's locker, right? To see if we can find more information there. Uh, A so row of personal lockers for the workers here. Not sure which one belongs to Carl. Well, the policeman probably wouldn't know that, but um, the worker would probably know it, right? So let's just try and... A few more questions, if I may. Hey, do you know which one of these lockers belongs to Carl? Uh, yeah, it's number two, uh, second from the left. Okay, I'll check it out. Is there an extra key for it somewhere? I don't think so. As far as I know, Carl had the only one. Well, if he's at work, then he should have the key on him, right? Uh -huh. That's enough questions for now. Okay. Locked. Doesn't look incredibly strong, though. I might be able to get it open with enough force. Uh, 
Jeez, try not to wreck the place. <laughs> no reason for alarm. I just needed to get this locker open. Oh, this is cool. I like this, actually, that they have added something like this to the game. That's really cool. Um, so we have some boots, we have a coat, and that looks like all we have in here. Let's see what we can find. There was a piece of paper in one of the inner pockets. Nice. Okay, so what is this? The note looks like it was written by a woman. It reads, Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. Registered? Registered for what? Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. That could be from her. Did she start working here or something and then he got nervous? I don't know. Maybe she... Maybe she used to date or is still dating someone who's working at this place. That could cause some uh, drama, right? A pair of large boots with dirt under them. Hmm. Well, it might be... Let's actually use this. So it's set to smart scan, right? There we go. Let's try this. Soil contains traces of rare flora. I can go and follow up on the saffron lead now, but I should check out the dormitory first. Okay. Soil contains traces of rare flora, saffron crocus, crocus sativus, boot print added to data vault. Oh, then we can kind of follow where he's been, probably. Nice. Uh, okay, so look at this. We have a boot print now. So we could look around. I don't know if we, we should be able to visibly see them, I assume. If we see some boot prints somewhere, we can use it. Um, okay, so I guess that was all that was in here, right? Then we still have the lockers. Um, okay. Let's check out this. Looks pre-collapse, basically a glorified corner lamp. There's a coin slot on the side with a coin stuck in it. I can probably pull it out using some extra strength. Oh, we might want to do that. I actually wanted to check something. If we go into smart again, uh, well, maybe that would be something on the coin. I was just wondering if we could find some blood that way. That could be kind of cool, but maybe we need the coin for that. So. Uh, let's do this and use it on this. Got the coin. Okay. I hope she was wearing gloves. I don't think she's wearing gloves, but I hope she is. Antique coin. It's an old pre-collapse coin. No one would accept it as payment today. Hmm. Okay. Is there anything special on it? Okay, we can't really do anything on these. I was wondering if we could, but it doesn't look like we can. Okay, so now we have an antique coin. I don't know what we're going to do with that, but we've got it. Um, was there anything else in here? Policeman, dormitory, Norton. Hmm. <laughs> well, we should probably... Let's just make sure to talk to you, everybody here. A few more questions, if I may. Let's see. Do you know anything about saffron plants? Nope. I know we grow them in Nordson, but that's it. Ew. Okay. Good to know. We didn't get anything new over here, right? Nope. Um. Do you know who wrote this note to Carl? Afraid not. I don't recognize the handwriting. Mm-hmm. I don't need to show him that. No? Okay. Well, maybe he would have some information that's about it. That's enough questions but... for now. Nope. Okay. And I don't think the policeman would have know anything about this. So, I guess we are going to head to the dormitory next time. Okay, well, this was a little bit of a be beginning, guys. What do you guys think? I think it's really, really cool. I like these these features. It's just a special approach or a very unique approach to this type of game. So, oh, this is going to be so exciting, guys. I'm really excited about playing this one. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And as always, do take care and happy gaming.